everybody! I'm so glad that you're here to worship and learn with us today. We're going to be learning about a time that God showed that He is the one true God. I can't wait for you to learn more. But first, we're going to hear some music. So go on, get up, and we're going to get some dance moves going. Can you do this? That's awesome. I love it. Okay, have fun!
Hey guys, I can't tell you how great it feels to be back. Today we're going to learn about Elijah and the mountain of Carmel. It's supposed to be Mount Carmel, not Mountain of Carmel. Mountain of Carmel. Uh-oh, it's supposed to be Mount Carmel. Oh well, I guess I'll have some yummy things to eat later. Well, and then on top of that, we are going to learn about how God defeated an idol named Baal. Not Baal of Hay. That's a Baal of Hay. We're talking about the idol, the false god of Baal. And on top of that, remember how we learned about our Bible verse and how it said, nor my praise to carved idols? That's what they were talking about. Anyway, so right now we're going to go through our Bible verse and we're going to say, I am the Lord. That is my name. I give my glory to no other, nor my praise to carved idols, not, not like bales of hay, carved idols, right? Isaiah 42, eight. All right, guys, have a great week. Remember to get your candy from your parents. Talk to you later. Good morning, hello kids. It's me, Miss Kara, and I come to you today with another Bible story and you are gonna love it. It's a good one. That is one of the things I love about the Old Testament. It is full of amazing stories. Even as an adult, I've learned these, a lot of these stories when I was just a little girl. And even now, as I was preparing for you this week, I was oh, amazed at all these really cool stories. We know and serve a very creative God. And God has such wonderful stories in this book, in the Bible, and I want you kids to know them and I want you to learn them young and early and I want you to have them in your heart so that it penetrates your mind. So today, our story is in 1 Kings yet again. So turn to the Old Testament to 1 Kings. And we will be in 1 Kings 18 and 19 today. So we were in 17 last week, and we will be in 18 and 19 today. The name of our story today is Elijah at Mount Carmel. And that is a mountain. And we're going to find out what's the big deal about that mountain in just a minute. So remember, our big picture question is this. How many gods are there? There is one true God who alone deserves worship. Now that this big picture question really hits on our story today because we're going to see some other gods that are pretending to be the one true God and they are not. There is one true God. And this is a really important big picture question because even in our life now, there's going to be other Things and people that are pretending to be other gods. Our hearts were made to worship and they will worship something. If they're not worshiping God, they will worship something else. That's why it is so important. Back in Exodus, when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, one of the Ten Commandments was, let no other God be before me. I am the one true God. So that's why our big picture question is really important. I want you to memorize it because you're teaching truth and goodness to your heart and your mind. So our story today, 1 Kings 18 and 19, and it is Elijah at the mountain of Carmel. Now here's how it goes. So remember last week when God told the widow through the prophet of Elijah, there is not going to be any rain 
and I will tell you when there, it will rain again. Well, guess what? It's been three years since that happened and there has been no rain and there was much suffering in the land of Israel. God was allowing the consequences of the people's sin to happen. And without the rain and without the rain, without the rivers, everything dried up and the people could not grow crops. And finally, God was ready to send the rain. But God told Elijah something before he sent the rain. He told Elijah to go to King Ahab. Now, who remembers about King Ahab? King Ahab was the evil King Ahab. Do your evil eyebrows. And the evil King Ahab of Israel, he told him to go to him. And so Elijah obeyed God, and he did. He went to, to Ahab. And Elijah told the king, meet me at Mount Carmel. So he tells him to go to the mountain. And he says, bring all the people of Israel. Gather all the people of Israel. Gather all the, the people who worship false gods. And that one of the false gods that they worship was Baal. And Baal had his own prophets who were false prophets. And God told them to bring all of them to this mountain. And so King Ahab and the people met him at the mountain. And, and Elijah tells all of these people, make up your minds. He says, you either follow God, you either follow Yahweh, you either follow the one true God, the Lord, or you follow Baal. Make up your minds. There is no doing both. You cannot serve. Remember when I told you at the beginning of the story, our hearts were made for worship. They, they will worship something. If they're not worshiping God, they will worship something else. This is what God is saying. Our hearts are not made to worship two gods because there is one true God. So Elijah set up a challenge. And this challenge is a little kooky and a little crazy. And it was to show who the one true God is. The prophets of the false god Baal set up an altar. And they put a bull on it. And Elijah said, go on, call the Baal and ask him to send fire to the altar. And I will call upon the Lord. The one true God who answers is the one who will send fire. And this is the one true God. And so the prophets of Baal danced and they cried out to their God and answer us, they said. But no one answered. Shout loudly, Elijah told them. Maybe your God is sleeping. Still no answer. And then the people gathered around Elijah and he set up an altar and he dug a trench, you know, a little, a little round thing around the altar. And guess what Elijah did? He filled it with water. Now, hold on a minute. He filled it with water and, and he doused the altar with water. Who, who, what does a fireman bring when there's, when there's a big fire? They bring water to put out the fire. So if Elijah wants God to send down fire on this big wet pile of stuff, that shouldn't burn. That should, that's, not, that's not how you make a fire. That's not how when you're making a fire pit, you don't get wet wood. You don't get wet things. It, it won't burn. But that's what Elijah did. And so the people, when they gathered around Elijah and he set up the altar, Elijah prayed. He said, Lord, please answer me so that these people will know that you are God. And guess what? The Bible says God sent a fire from heaven and it burned up the bull and it burned up the wood and it burned up the stones and it even burned up the dust, which I don't know what that means, but that's what the Bible says. And it dried up all the water in the trench. And when the people saw this, <laughs> they fell down and they worshiped God. And they said, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. And Elijah had all the prophets who worship Baal killed. And the sky grew dark. And, and, and then the rain came down. Finally, the end of the drought was happening. But guess what? King Ahab had an evil queen named Jezebel. She was a bad mammy jammy. And, every, and, and King Ahab told Elijah, everything, told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done. And Jezebel wanted to kill Elijah. And so Elijah fled into the wilderness. He walked up to a different mountain, Mount Harab. And at that mountain, God spoke to Elijah and encouraged him, Elijah, don't give up. 
Now I want to tell you something interesting about the god Baal. Baal was a Canaanite god. And remember the people of Israel, when they came to the promised land, which is the, the promised land was Canaan, they had their own pretend not real gods. And their pretend not real god was a god of rain and a god of fertility. So it's really interesting that God went up against this person and there was no rain for three years. He was showing that he was the one true God. Now, God's miracles do not stop here. We see in the New Testament how God provides his very own son, King Jesus, and, and provides for his people through his son, through salvation, through Jesus, that God always provides for his people. God always wants to be with his people. So that is our story for today. Thank you so much for listening. I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye-bye.